All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be the aftermath video for the Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz heavyweight championship bout that occurred last Saturday. The fight pretty much went how I thought it was going to go. Anthony Joshua won by decision. I did have a very difficult time deliberating over who I thought was going to win the fight before the fight occurred. But I did figure that Anthony Joshua was going to take the safe route. I still think that Andy Ruiz is the better overall boxer. But if you're not willing to commit yourself to the level of discipline and hard work that it's going to take to maintain your championship or you being the belt holder, what difference does it really make if you're the more talented or skilled fighter? And I promise you that when Andy Ruiz left that ring on Saturday and he got back to the locker room or got back to the hotel, he shed a lot of tears. All the tears that he shed should have been replaced by the pounds that he should have shed before the fight. If he came into the bout weighing 283 pounds, and it showed because he was clearly heavier and even more out of shape than he was in the first fight. Unfortunately for him, he allowed his hubris and his pride to take over when it came to how he approached the second fight. I believe that he thought that Anthony Joshua was a mentally shattered fighter and that the rematch was probably going to be even easier than the initial fight. I believe that he thought that Anthony Joshua was going to be looking for get back, try to get aggressive, attempt to exchange with him, and that he would make it a short night by catching Anthony Joshua in the chin early, knocking him out, and going off and eating 10 million burritos and tacos after the fight. Unfortunately for him, that is not how it went. Anthony Joshua was disciplined throughout the fight. It was very obvious that his corner had the same game plan that I laid out for him prior to the fight, and that's commonplace if you've watched boxing long enough. Fighters who understand that they have physical advantages, whether it be in reach, height, etc., you have to be able to use those advantages whenever you're in the ring against a shorter fighter who's extremely fast and who hits hard, like an Andy Ruiz. And I had the suspicion that Joshua was going to try to be extremely conservative, especially with all the money that's on the line later on, especially with him fighting or presumably fighting the winner of the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder fight next year. And Eddie Hearn, after the fight, was trying to throw his little shots at Deontay Wilder. <laughs> so on and so forth so who knows that might be the next fight for anthony joshua or maybe a third fight with mr ruiz that they'll try to build up who knows but once again when you go back into the history of fighting especially championship level pugilism the second fight can tend to be the more boring match in the ali frazier trilogy the second fight is probably the most boring of the three because ali used a lot of the same tactics that anthony joshua used of course ali was far faster and more skilled than an Anthony Joshua and had a far better chin but he did the same thing he did a lot of holding walking Joe Frazier back to the middle of the ring using his jab breaking off the action so on and so forth so congratulations to Anthony Joshua he did what he was supposed to do I still see a lot of the same flaws but he did listen to a lot of the people who knew what they were talking about and as I stated in the aftermath of their first fight when I say their first fight I'm talking about the first Joshua Ruiz fight I stated that he had too much muscle on him. And anyone who paid attention could see that he has shed a lot of that muscle mass that was slowing him down. He was far faster. He used his feet. Good for him. Will that fight plan work against fighters like a Tyson Fury or a Deontay Wilder? No. He's not going to be able to keep Tyson Fury away from him or Deontay Wilder away from him with that game plan. So there are going to be moments in that fight, that prospective fight, where he's going to have to play Russian roulette with both of those fighters or either one of those fighters. We'll see. I'm still not convinced that that fight is going to actually happen. When I say that fight, I'm talking about the Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder fight. I'm hopeful for it, hopefully sometime early or in the middle of 2020, but we'll see. Do I think that Joshua can beat Wilder? I think that Anthony Joshua has, <laughs> he has a puncher's chance of maybe hurting Deontay before Deontay hurts him. Because we know that Deontay is a knockout hunter. Anthony Joshua is a fighter with great knockout power who's not necessarily a knockout hunter. But Deontay Wilder has historically great power. And he's someone who is a great athlete. I think that he's a better natural athlete than Anthony Joshua. I do think that if that fight goes more than four or five rounds, eventually Wilder is going to catch him with something hard and it's probably going to stop him. Because if Joshua gets hit with a punch from Deontay Wilder that is anywhere near as hard 
as some of the punches that Andy Ruiz hit him with in their first fight, and even a couple of shots that he got caught with in the rematch, as conservatively as he fought. I promise you, Deontay is going to make it. <laughs> he's going to make it a quick night because I can see Joshua trying to jab and move and hold and try to stay away from that power. But like Joe Lewis stated back in the day, you can run, but you can't hide. So the question now begs to be asked, what is next for Mr. Andy Ruiz? Well, what's next for Andy Ruiz is about three weeks of depression, crying in his room and regrets. And that's what happens in life when we do not put our best foot forward. And we've all been there. We've all been in positions or time periods in our lives where we felt like, you know what? The reason why I lost is because I did not take this seriously enough. And it might not just be in a sporting event. It might be in some other aspect of life, real life. So hopefully Mr. Andy Ruiz will learn from it and come back a better fighter. Do I think that he'll ever get another opportunity to fight for the world championship? Maybe. If the negotiations break down between the Joshua team and the victor between Wilder and Fury, they might call up Ruiz and ask for a third fight. Or hell, they might just ask for a third fight anyway. Because there's going to be a lot of time in between the fight that we just saw last Saturday and the Wilder versus Fury fight. So maybe Joshua wants to stay warm with Andy Ruiz and say, you know, we can give it a third go just to show you that the second fight wasn't a fluke. But just getting back to the point, good for Mr. Anthony Joshua. Sometimes you have to fight smart and save the excitement for another time. He is 30 years old. He's heading into another stage of his career. He's in the stage now where he should consider always fighting smart and only taking risks when it would behoove him to do so when he has another fighter hurt. Because you don't want to end up being one of these guys who's trying to throw the crowd all the time and have all of these health issues down the line. But anyway, peace.